Hi everyone and welcome back. Mindy here with you today and I'm going to be showing you how I created this card using a stamp set from the January 2019 release from Gina K Designs. Here is a look at the stamp set that I'll be using. It is called Today and Always and you can see there are some great stamps images on the stamp set. You have a polka dot background and then lots of floral building images. So I'm actually going to be just using one for right now off of this and this is going to be that rose. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm taking a piece of watercolor cardstock and I prepped it with an anti-static powder tool. The reason for this is I'm going to be doing quite a bit of heat embossing on this. So since I am going to be using the same image, I'm just using a, an acrylic block to stamp my image. So I inked it up with some Versamark ink, and then I'm just going across the entire piece of cardstock and stamping that down. Now the first one, I think I bumped it and smudged it, but I'm still going to heat emboss it. And I actually did still keep it off on the side because I may use that on a different project. It still looks really cool. It did kind of double up a little bit, but it still looks really neat. So once I have those finished stamping out, which I know was hard to see that clear ink on camera, but I can see it in person, I'm going to take some gold embossing powder, and this is from Gina K Designs, and I'm just sprinkling that all over those images that I just stamped down. Since I did use Versamark ink, it's a clear sticky ink, so all of my embossing powder is going to stick to that. Once I'm happy with that, and those are all covered, I'll take my heat tool, and I do have that warming up on the side so it's nice and hot when I take it to my cardstock. That's just going to help eliminate some warping. And then I'll melt those down till they're nice and shiny and let that sit for a couple minutes to cool off. Once my panel was cooled off, I taped it down to a wooden board with some thermal web purple tape and I'm wetting the entire background. Then I'm going to use some Violet Brocade. This is shimmer powder, and to me, this is kind of a cheater's way of watercoloring. I don't do a lot of watercoloring, but I love the look of the shimmer powders. So I'm just sprinkling this on to my wet background, and then I'm going to add some more water to get that shimmer powder to move. Because I heat embossed, it does want to kind of get stuck in certain areas, which is perfectly fine. That just adds more character to the images. Uh, some areas were more stuck than others, so I will bring in a paintbrush to kind of move that around. I wanted that color to really be in all of those nooks and crannies. So just spreading that around those petals a little bit. I just thought this was kind of a nice way to watercolor if you're not uh, real familiar with watercoloring or comfortable with it. The shimmer powders really help you with that. It just adds this really beautiful watercolor look and some color to it and you have very minimal effort put into it and with the shimmer powder you do want to just tap the bottle you do not want to squish it and have that come bursting out all over your table or you will have a huge mess so I did add a couple more sprinkles to kind of deepen up that color when you're wiping up any of that excess water it will take some of that color away so depending on how vibrant you want the colors or how soft you want them uh, you want to keep that in mind when you're dabbing up that extra water. Then I'm just taking a heat tool and helping that along to dry that process down. Now I know right now it's looking kind of like a hot mess and that's okay because what I'll end up doing is cutting these out by hand but you can see there are some beautiful vibrant colors in here. Then I'll just remove that purple tape and here's a look at some of those colors on the flowers. Then what I do is I fussy cut around the image and you can see here they are cut out. So it's just a, a great way to add some color to your flowers. Another way to do it. Next for adding these to my card, I kind of arranged them in that top left corner where about I wanted them to be. And then I'm bringing in some more elements from that stamp set. So we have just a couple sprigs and some leaves and I'm just kind of randomly placing those out, stamping them right onto my card base that I'm going to use. That card base is a four by five and a quarter because I will be layering it on top of an A2 size card base. For my colors, I'm using some key lime, fresh asparagus, and then lovely lavender. And I really liked that soft purple that really worked well with my uh, shimmer powder, how the colors laid on that on the image. 
So I'm just adding those sprigs just around that area. I'll bring some down towards the bottom, adding a couple additional leaves. And that key lime is such a great vibrant green. I think that's one of my favorite greens right now. And so this stamp set has a lot of different things you can do with it. There's going to be more inspiration on the Gina K Designs blog, which I'll have listed down below. And I'll also have all of the supplies listed for my card as well. Now you could just use an acrylic block to do all of your stamping. I just find it easier to use the Misty's. So if I wanted to double stamp something to darken up that color a little bit, I can do that very easily. Next, I'm taking the word today, which is also on the stamp set, and I'm going to stamp this towards the bottom of my card. I had already arranged where my items were going to go, so I knew this is where I needed to be and how much room I needed to leave. And I'm using the Gina K Designs Black Onyx Ink, and I do stamp it twice to make sure I have a really nice dark impression. Then I'll take some craft foam and I wanted to add dimension to my card. I trimmed the craft foam down to the same size as my panel and then used the connect glue to attach them both. And this has a really nice strong hold on it so I'm just giving this a good push down. And then I can attach that to my A2 size panel that I created out of white cardstock. So Lots of white space on here, which I think is just perfect for these colorful flowers. Next, I can go on and start adding on my floral images. So I'm applying these directly to the card panel, the ones that are going to be underneath. And I just use the liquid glue to do that, kind of hovering over with the one I want on top. The one with the most color is the one I wanted on top. So I just added that liquid glue to my floral images and just held that down for a couple minutes since these were cut out of watercolor cardstock and that is a, a thicker heavier paper I just made sure to hold that for a couple extra seconds and I am really loving Gina's foam squares these are just the perfect size when you want to add a little bit of dimension to your images or onto your card you can double up if you wanted to add a little bit more lift to them but I really liked adding just the one layer to my center flower and I'll just add that to that little cluster I created at the top. And off camera, I did go ahead and stamp and heat emboss my little sentiment, sentiments. So I stamped them in Versamark ink on black cardstock and then heat embossed with gold embossing powder. And I just trimmed them down to very tiny strips that I'm going to put around my today's sentiment on the card. And you can see I'm just trimming down those foam squares. Now Gina has black foam squares that would be better behind my black cardstock but I forgot to grab them so white still works perfectly I just thought black would have been a better fit if I would have remembered at the time and that is going to finish up my tutorial for this card I also have a few card examples at the end of the video using some of the stamp sets from the January 2019 release. These are going to be available on Gina's website January 24th, 2019. So be sure to head on over there and pick those up. And I will be uh, creating some more tutorials using those stamp sets at a later date. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and you want to see more tutorials from me. Thanks again and I'll catch you next time.